Hi, my name is Maria Lewis, and I had the privilege to conduct research at Ban Lab at Yale University this summer. And my presentation is on defining senescence markers in human lymph node across different ages. So what is senescence? Senescence cells can be good or bad. They're helpful because they help limit the proliferation of aged or damaged cells that we don't want dividing anymore. And they can also be used in tumor suppression. However, they also have a negative effect by suppressing cytotoxic T cell responses, which we use in our immune cells. Senescent cells release the senescence associated secretory phenotype, and this helps maintain senescence. So senescence can accumulate in aged tissue, which oftentimes leads to the idea that senescence drives aging because the accumulation of these cells comes with negative effects. The growth arrest is activated by P16 and P21, which repress CDK4 and CDK6. And this is the main part of our experiment and what we are looking for. And so in this image, this just shows senescence and like how it comes about, such as telomere erosion, mitochondrial dysfunction, et cetera. And then the pathway it follows through some of the proteins I listed, such as PD, P21 and P16, eventually leading to G1 arrest. And so P16 and P21 are INC4 proteins, and therefore they act as tumor suppressors. These are the main proteins we are looking for in our experiments because they indicate senescence. P16, like P21, is a CDKI that affects the cell cycle by binding and inhibiting CDK4 and CDK6. CDK and CDK inhibitors regulate cell proliferation. The binding of, C of P16 to CDK4 and CDK6 allows P16 to inhibit the phosphorylation and induce cell growth arrest because it prevents cells with functional retinoblastoma protein from entering the S phase. Similarly, P21 suppresses CDK2 cyclin E activity, and this can be stimulated by P53 to inhibit the G1S and G2M transition, which results in G1 and G2 arrest. And so the INC4 locus acts as a senescence sensor in which disruption of the polycomb repressive complexes that control the methylation of a protein activates P16 and therefore induces senescence. And then this diagram simply shows the pathways to senescence, such as the P16 CDK4-6 pathway, um, and then also the MDM2 P53 pathway to senescence. And so for our samples, we use human fresh frozen lymph node. Ages ranged from 1 to 78 years old. Highlighted are the RIN numbers for the six tissues shown. The DV200% is the size distribution of the RNA and it, and it defines a region for fragments larger than 200 nucleotides. And so this RNA RIN number is just the RNA integrity number, and it's designed to help evaluate the integrity of the RNA sample. It's on a scale of one to 10. And so obviously uh, seven to eight is a fairly good number, but ideally we want at least a RIN of five and above. So some of the RIN numbers are depicted in these images. The lowest RIN number we had was the one-year-old with a 5.2, and some of the higher numbers were a 6.3 for the 29-year-old. And so this is the actual staining of P16 and P21. We prepared a 2% PFA and then a dilution and blocking buffer to be used. So for the fixation step, we fixed the tissue with a 2% PFA and then washed, washed it with PBS and dipped it in water and air dried. For the permeabilization step, we assembled the reservoir and then washed the tissue twice with the dilution buffer, and then once with the blocking buffer, we blocked it. And then the main step was the staining, in which we made the staining cocktail and added it to the reservoir. And we did one experiment overnight and the other for two hours in RT. Either way works, and once all of that is over, we simply wash it with the dilution buffer again, and then apply the DAPI staining for a solid minute. And then after that, we wash the tissue again with the PBS, and then we can image for the P16 and P21. And then these images just show the tissue slide and the reservoir. And as you can see on the slide, there's three tissues on it. However, we typically use the one in the middle and then assemble the reservoir based off that. And then this was the actual staining for the P16 on the 20-year-old. The P16 is in green, and then the nucleus is in blue. Tissues are naturally autofluorescent and emit green light. So a lot of this is actually so-called background. What we actually are looking for is the P16 within the nucleus. And so as you can see in the 20-year-old, most of this is background, and there's not as much P16 within the nucleus, indicating not as much like senescent cells and uh, a lesser 
version of the P16 compared to like the 68 year old. And then this is the 20 year old P21 stain. Again, the P21 is in red, the nucleus is still in blue. As you can see, there's just not a lot of red dots showing up, therefore indicating not a lot of P21 exhibited in this tissue. On the other hand, this is a 68-year-old P16 stain. Uh, as I said before, the P16 is still in green. There is a lot more P16 within the nucleus in this stain. There isn't as much so-called background, and most of it is within the nucleus, indicating an increase in P16 and therefore senescent cells with aging. Similarly, this is the P21 stain for the 68-year-old. Again, there are a lot more red dots exhibited in this stain, indicating the increase of P21. So comparing the two samples, the 68-year-old and the 20-year-old for the P16, we can see in these images that the 68-year-old contains a lot more green dots and therefore P16 within the nucleus compared to the 20-year-old. 20, 20 and this indicates an increase in P16 with aging and an increase in senescent cells. And that is also concurrent with the P21 stain, where there are a lot more red dots exhibited in the 68-year-old stain compared to the 20-year-old stain, indicating an increase in P21 with aging. And then this is simply the 78-year-old stain, which is the oldest sample we had. And as you can see, again, the P16 just simply seems to be increasing with age and increasing in the nucleus uh, compared to the 20-year-old and even the 68-year-old. And so once we had the, auto, the immunofluorescence to pick the best areas, we were able to go forward and do the D-bit sequencing and spatial multiomics. D-bit sequencing is deterministic barcoding in tissue. The tissue is incubated with a mix of antibody-derived DNA tags that are designed to recognize a certain panel of proteins. Uh, after this, the PDMS is added with 50 microchannels on top of the tissue to introduce the first set of barcode A1 to A50. This barcode contains an illegal DT sequence that binds the poly A tail of mRNAs and allows for a reverse transcription to occur to yield the cDNAs, which are covalently linked to barcodes A1 to A50. After this, barcode B is then introduced. Barcode B contains a ligation linker, unique molecular identifier, and a PCR handle. This allows for the two barcodes to eventually be joined and a 2D array of spatial barcodes to be formed. CDNAs are then extracted from the tissue slide. The template is switched to incorporate another PCR handle, and then it is eventually amplified by PCR for preparation of sequencing library via tagmentation. And so these two diagrams, A and B, simply so show the process I was explaining. Diagram A shows more of the actual process itself, the incorporation of the two barcodes, and eventually the 2D array. Barco the diagram B shows more of the chemistry of the reverse transcription and the ligation and the joining of these two barcodes. And so for this experiment, the device we use, we used a PDMS reservoir and acrylic clamps. There are 50 parallel micro channels. So each half of the PDMS slab has 50 inlets. We use the device in the upper left corner of the images to punch wells into the PDMS and create the, in the inlets. It was a 20 micrometer resolution. And then we can set up the reservoir so that the tissue is in the middle of the PDMS and the barcodes can cross the tissue evenly. And so then this is the actual barcoding. Uh, as you can see, the house vacuum pulls the barcode solution. It is placed on one side of the PDMS slab and then it pulls it across the tissue to create these two nicely, this 2D array of the two barcodes. And I would simply like to thank the NIH Cellular Senescence Network for this opportunity this summer and the Fan Lab Research for at Yale University for the opportunity to join their lab and assisting me in my research endeavors. This was my first research experience and I couldn't imagine a better one. So thank you to everyone who helped get me to this point and thank you for this amazing opportunity.